people meet me and they, they don't know who the hell I am. And they say, well, what did you direct? And I said, Fugitive. And they, they, they go, they jump at it. That's my favorite movie. Long before he would direct one of the greatest thrillers of all time. We have a fugitive that's been on the run for 90 minutes. Years before he brought one of the biggest stars on the planet back home. Officer Buster, this man in a blue top coat, waving a gun and screaming. And even before he set loose one of the greatest cinematic chases through the streets of our city. Director Andrew Davis was a kid from the south side of Chicago. I was born uh, on the west side at a hospital called Bethany Hospital, and we brought back to a little apartment in Rogers Park. And then we moved to the south side when I was about eight years old. And in grammar school, I, uh, I wound up being a projectionist of films. And then it just continued on. Davis continued on to earn a journalism degree from the University of Illinois before turning his sights to filmmaking, where he was given the opportunity to turn his home into his muse. I knew what it offered in terms of architecture, in terms of the reality of a doctor and what we, what we could use with the facilities at all the different hospitals and, and the institutions of Chicago medical world. And I had done four movies already in Chicago. And it was the 1992 blockbuster Under Siege that earned him the notice of actor Harrison Ford. Harrison was shown the movie and he agreed with the producer, Arnold Copelson, yeah, get this guy, let him direct the fugitive. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. Davis was brought on to direct the big screen adaptation of the 1960s television series, The Fugitive. But it was his sister, a Chicago nurse, who helped turn the film into something special. When I got the script, the one-armed man had been hired by Tommy Lee Jones because Harrison had messed up on Tommy's wife on an operating. I mean, it was crazy. And so I called my sister, who was a nurse at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles, and I said, Josie, get me a reason to get a doctor in a lot of trouble. And she called back a couple of days later. She, she had been involved with a very smart resident who said, why don't, why is there's a drug protocol that's really not working? And this doctor's gonna say, this is no good. This pharmaceutical company's gonna try to shut him up. You kill Lens too, huh? Can we get some security uh, in here, please. The decision to shoot the film in Chicago not only brought Davis back home, but star Harrison Ford as well. Harrison Ford is from Chicago. The decision to come back to Chicago was a mutual one. The Fugitive also gave Davis the chance to re-team with his Under Siege star, Tommy Lee Jones. I wanna talk about working with Tommy Lee Jones again. Specifically, there's a story that I love, and I just wanna know if it's true, that apparently at one point on set, Tommy Lee Jones told someone, it's not like anyone's going to win any awards for this film. The Oscar goes to Tommy Lee Jones in The Fugitive. Is that story true? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, because the script was being developed as we shot, and we were working out the nuances, you know, Tommy comes from a Harvard literary background. You know, he thought, how can this work if we're just making it up as we go along? One of the film's most iconic scenes, hell, one of the most legendary moments ever filmed in Chicago, is the chase through the St. Patrick's Day Parade, something Davis had to shoot without anyone really noticing. We just had one camera on a steady cam. We were running around. There were a few other cameras grabbing stuff. But basically, uh, a great steady cam operator, Steve St. John, followed Tommy and Harrison through the parade. Might be a good idea to cut straight to the chase, so to speak and say that this is one of the year's best action films. But all these years later, when most people think of The Fugitive, they often think of one line. I don't care. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. A line that 30 years later, no one is quite sure who came up with. Now that there's so much attention on the 30th anniversary, I'm reading all different kind of perspectives about it. You know, Harrison thought there were pages and pages of dialogue that we dropped. Other people said, uh, you know, I knew it was the right line. And when he said it, I said, cut, you know. A script supervisor, Joanne Carlson, who's in Chicago, says, I remember Tommy saying, all I need to say is I don't care. Get out on your knees. The Fugitive would go on to become not just the third highest grossing film of 1993, holding the number one spot at the box office for six weeks straight. It was also one of the best reviewed, earning seven Oscar nominations, including Best Picture and its legacy as a cinematic classic is forever cemented in pop culture. I'm telling you, I didn't do anything. I don't care. 
It wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. And he bursts in the ballroom and he goes, you switched the samples. But for Davis, the biggest victory of all isn't the awards, the box office, or the countless Simpsons references. It's the simple fact that even 30 years later, people still love The Fugitive. People meet me and they don't know who the hell I am. And they say, well, what did you direct? And I said, The Fugitive. And they, they, they go, they jump back. That's my favorite movie, you know. In pop culture, that's what I appreciate.